What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands 2 Top 10 list and this time we're taking a look at the 10 best base game items in Borderlands 2. These are the best items you can get without any DLC for this game. So let's just jump right into it. And the award for last place in a Top 10 list goes to number 10. At number 10 is the quad, specifically the Docks quad. This shotgun can be found in both blue and purple rarity and both pack a very powerful punch. The quad has the distinct feature of possessing a massive amount of projectiles, upwards of 20 with the Rustler's prefix, but again, I prefer the Docks prefix for a couple reasons. Number one, you get a 72% critical hit bonus, a faster reload, and dramatically higher accuracy, which is super important when using a shotgun from further than a foot away from your enemy. The Docks quad is powerful at any level in the game, and if you find one during your first playthrough, then congrats, because the next 10 levels or so just got a lot easier for you. Number nine, this better be good! Coming in at number nine is the Quasar. This legendary grenade mod is obtainable as a world drop or from an ultimate badass Farkad. This makes it a tough one to get, but if you are lucky enough to find one on any playthrough, then you have yourself a very powerful grenade capable of crowd control and massive damage output. This grenade will always be shock damage with a large blast radius and a combination of singularity grenade effect, pulling enemies toward the grenade, and a Tesla effect causing damage within the area around where the enemies have been pulled to. The Quasar is one of the better legendary grenade mods in the game and I highly recommend it. Eight, eight's a good number. Strong, solid number, you know what I mean? Coming in at number eight is the Lady Fist. This is one of the best quest rewards in all of Borderlands 2, and it is just a blue rarity handgun. You get it from completing the Uncle Teddy quest line from TK Baja by giving the blueprints at the end to Una. I prefer the redundant version of this gun as you fire two bullets rapidly, allowing you to maximize your damage very quickly. But the most defining feature of this gun is the 800% critical hit modifier. You land a crit with this gun and watch insane damage numbers pop up on your screen. I highly recommend using my guide to farming multiple quest reward items as a means to acquire every variant and element of this gun that you might possibly want. Check the description of this video for a link to that guide. On to lucky number 7, which for a top 10 list is kind of mediocre. Coming in at number 7 is the Hide of Terramorphous. This legendary shield has only one loot source, and that is Terramorphous the Invincible Raid Boss. Now you add to that that this is a very rare drop from Terra, and you have yourself quite a very rare item as I covered in my recent 10 extremely rare items list. However, if you're lucky enough to get your hands on this shield, then you have one of the best shields in the entire game. The Hide gives bonuses primarily for players that are using a melee build, but the shield also gives the owner exceptional survivability in that it also has Nova and Spike damage toward attackers. If you're even luckier, you might find yourself an elemental resistant version of this shield that grants immunity to shock, fire, explosive, or corrosive damage. And now for number six! Coming in at number six, one of my all-time favorite grenades replaced only by the impeccable Chain Lightning from the Tiny Tina DLC is the Stormfront. This shock damage Merv and Tesla style combination grenade is great for damage and for healing via moxie weapons as it deals constant damage to nearby enemies caught in the area of effect. This grenade is obtainable from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Easter Egg and the Bloodshot Stronghold. See the link on screen or in the description below for a detailed farming guide. Any or all four of these mini bosses can drop this and I have seen a double drop once. It's a fast and easy farm for one of the best grenades in the game and I highly recommend going after the sticky longbow variant, though anything short of rubberized is very good. Number five! At number five, ah, the ever elusive Norfleet. This legendary rocket launcher is only available from one of two sources, Hyperius the Invincible or Vermivorous the Invincible. Either way, it's a tough fight and a really rare drop. The drop rate is much higher with Vermi, but getting her to spawn is a huge pain. Hyperius is a much easier kill and can even be solo killed easily by several characters. Add to that that you can walk out of his arena and then back in after killing him to fight him again and I would lay my odds on you getting it easier as a solo player from Hyperius. However, since this list is about the base game items, then what you need to do is gather yourself a 4 player team, go to the Tundra Express farmhouse or to Caustic Caverns and try to spawn Vermivorous. Worst case scenario, maybe you end up with a Quasar or some other loot from Tubby Varkids. Now as far as which version you should go for, 
honestly, whichever version you get will be amazing, but the ultimate version that I have always used is the Prudential variant, as it has a higher fire rate than some of the other variants. Now, if you're having trouble getting a Norfleet, a decent substitute is a Prasma Cannon, which is also a base game E-Tech rocket launcher. Okay, here we are at number four! Number four is the Sham. Part of any good Vault Hunter's armory should be a Sham Shield. The bunker is an easy farm, so getting a Sham is just a matter of committing the time to the farm. Having said that, the only time I've ever gotten a perfect 94% variant Sham was from Pyrepeat the Invincible, so bear that in mind when farming. Now what makes the Sham so good is its high absorb chance. Enemy bullets get soaked up like water into a sponge, especially if you're lucky enough to get the 94% absorb variant. But even on the low end, this shield is amazing. So take a day and farm the bunker, and even if you don't get this shield, you're likely to max out your iridium and snag some other really good loot, possibly even a quad. And now we're down to number three! Number three is the B shield. Ah, oh, the B. Beloved, hated, oft misunderstood. I've always compared the B to a high scoring offense in football. Use it to put up points, but it will leave your defense in dire straits a lot. With the B shield, you sacrifice a lot of defense in order to do massive, and I do mean massive, damage. Having said that, there's plenty of ways you can offset this problem, namely moxie weapons for self-healing or transfusion grenades to damage and steal health from enemies. Either way, the B is a powerful tool to have in your inventory. The easiest method for acquiring this shield in the base game is via Hunter Hellquist during the mission This Just In. He is a repeatable mini boss, so feel free to save and quit to kill him repeatedly until he drops the B for you. Number two! Coming in at number two, the Lyuda, or the Lyud Mila, if you will. The most powerful sniper rifle in the base game, the Lyuda, or as it's called on the Xbox 360, the White Death, is a rapid fire, highly accurate sniper rifle capable of outputting immense damage in short order. This legendary sniper is obtainable from Gettle in the Dust, who first appears during the Good, the Bad, and the Mordecai side quest. And honestly, this sniper is easily one of the best all-around items in the entirety of the game, not just the base game. So do yourself a favor and farm for this bad boy and obliterate enemies with ease. For my honorable mention, I want to name a few items because honestly, there are so many good base game items, it was impossible to truly narrow it down to 10, but I didn't want to make a 30 minute long top 20 either. So honorable mention goes to the Infinity Pistol, the Bitch, the Conference Call, the Ruby, the Heartbreaker, the Lasco, and the Good Touch. Okay, here it is, the Big Kahuna, number one! And finally, at number one, we have the Unkempt Herald. Now, the double penetrating variant is widely known as the best version, but honestly, every variant of this gun is powerful, capable of one or two shot kills on most enemies. Now, using this gun in the overpower levels allows you to use a shield other than the B, so you can still do high damage without sacrificing defense. And as amazing as this gun is, it is super easy to get. Savage Lee is an incredibly easy farm, just see the link on the screen or in the description below for my guide on how to farm him, and it is possible to get two or three or even more of these in a few hours of farming. Now like I said, the double penetrating version is the ideal one to get, but all versions are powerful, so take a lazy weekend day and just go hunting for some Savage Lee and get yourself the best base game item out there. So that's my top 10 best base game items. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please leave a like. Also, if